Hey, Tony here. Today I want to tell you all about the films that I watched during the month of March, so stick around. So during the month of March, I have been continuing on with at least watching one movie every single day. Um, this is my second year doing this. I do want um, to dig into this collection and want to keep watching my um, movies that I've got in the collection. So during the month of March, I did watch quite a few films. So I wanted to take time today to kind of go over what I watched from my Letterboxd account. Um, the first movie that I watched is a sequel to Murder on the Orient Express, which I watched last month. And when I saw that um, this movie was playing in the theater, I definitely wanted to check it out. So it is Death on the Nile, which is getting a physical media release here in the month of April. So I will be adding that to the collection. But Death on the Nile was a really good film. I gave it three stars on Letterboxd. Um, really got some really great performances, a good story, and a nice little mystery. So if you've never seen Death on the Nile, that's one that you should be looking out for. Definitely check that out. Also check out Murder on the Orient Express. It was a fun movie. Um, the second movie that I watched is this film called The Night House, which I've had in the collection for a few months now since it got released. I um, finally took the time to watch this one. Somebody had recommended that I check it out. Um, really good story. It is a, um, it's a horror story. It's got some really good um, ghost elements in it. Um, so definitely check out The Night House. Um, I gave it three and a half stars on Letterboxd. Okay, the next film that I added to the collection last month is Alligator. I believe it was last month. Maybe it was actually this month that I added this to the collection. But I got the um, Screen Factory 4K edition of Alligator. Really enjoyed this film. It is a creature feature from 1980. Um, and I wish we could have seen the alligator a lot more than what we did. But the parts that we saw of the alligator looked great. Really fun story. Lots of... Um, good kills in it lots of good suspense build up um, so definitely check out alligator okay the next one i watched was another one that i saw in the theater and it is the batman i went and saw this um after work one evening i believe it was on a tuesday and so i was kind of beat from the day because you know i do get up at 4 30 in the morning so seeing this film i didn't enjoy it as much as i thought i was going to enjoy it i wanted it to be i don't know to me, it was just a little bit too long, maybe 15, 20 minutes too long. Um, but I did enjoy the movie for what it was. I do definitely want to check it out again when it comes out on physical media. Um, but I did see The Batman. Okay, the next film that I watched was called Mass. This is another newer release. Um, someone had um, recommended that I check this one out. Really good story. It is a hard watch just because of the subject matter. Um, I did give it three and a half stars on Letterboxd. Great performances, great story. Um, if you're into those kind of um, tragic type stories, this is pretty much a one location film. So um, it's not a very lot of action or anything in it, but a lot of dialogue and great performances. So check that out. Okay, the next one is another recommendation. Um, I did take time to watch Blue Bayou. I've been wanting to watch this one for quite some time now. I finally was able to take the time to do that. Another one with some great performances. Um, I got this one from the Target Buy to Get One Free sale. And I um, hadn't had a chance to watch it, so I did take time. It got three and a half stars on my Letterboxd account. So definitely check that one out. And then I was participating in Ken at Mid-Level Media's um, 1984 month. So I did watch a bunch of films in 1980, from 1984. The first one that I watched was Red Dawn. Really enjoyed this one. It had been a long time since I've seen this one. Got a lot of great young actors in it. Um, Patrick Swayze, Charlie Sheen. Um, I believe C. Thomas Howell is in it. Um, but anyways, check this one out if you've never seen it. I did give that one three stars on Letterboxd. Another one from 1984 that I watched was Firestarter, a Stephen King adaptation um, starring a young Drew Barrymore. It's got Martin Sheen in it also. Um, really good performance uh, from a young actress. Um, I did enjoy the storyline. It had been a long time since I've seen this one. I did give it three stars on Letterboxd. 
Okay, the next film from 1984 that I watched is from the Criterion Collection. Really love the packaging on this. It's Repo Man. Um, I gave it three stars, but I really couldn't get into this film as much as I thought I would. Um, I had never seen it before. I might have seen bits and pieces of it. <clears throat> but um, overall, it's a really good story. But I just didn't really like the, um, the storyline as far as the action that was going on. I say it's a good story. It was a good, unique story, but I just couldn't get into it. It's a little bit slow paced. Um, but I did give it three stars on Letterboxd because um, I thought it deserved three stars. Okay, the next one that I watched is from 1984 and it's Blood Simple. Probably one of my favorite Ethan and Joel Cohen films. Um, I believe this is their first film. Really good story. I enjoyed this one. It gets four and a half stars in my book. If you've never seen Blood Simple, definitely check that out. Highly recommend it. Great story. Okay, the next film that I watched from 1984 gets three and a half stars, and it is Footloose. This is one that I grew up watching. Um, I did do a top ten movies from 1984 that I have in my collection video, so definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. But Footloose is one of those top ten films. Brings a lot of memories back from my teenage years. Um, really enjoy the music, the soundtrack, and just a fun story. Um, and a young Kevin Bacon and Lori Singer, I believe. And um, yeah, definitely check that out. Okay, the next film from 1984 is another favorite of mine, and it is 16 Candles. Um, this right here, of course, has Molly Ringwald and Anthony Michael Hall in it. Really fun story from 1984. Um, brings a lot of my child, um, a lot of my teenage high school years back to memory. Um, but definitely check that out if you've never seen it. Okay, another film from 1984 that I watched that I did not care for it is The Hotel New Hampshire. I gave it two stars on Letterboxd. This has Jodie Foster and Rob Lowe in it. And they had a very strange relationship. I believe they were brother and sister but they were not behaving like a brother and sister should behave, in my opinion. Um, but I just cannot get into this movie. It was very odd. Um, I gave it two stars on Letterboxd. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out, a review or something of it first, before you go into it. Another film from 1984 that I watched, um, actually, I, after I watched The Hotel New Hampshire, I did watch a movie on the streaming on Netflix, The Adam Project. Um, it had just come, I think it had just came out and I really wanted to check it out. I heard a lot of good things about it. It is a Ryan Reynolds film. I really had a lot of fun with it. Um, it it's a typical Ryan Reynolds film. So just know that before go, getting into it. But I did enjoy the story. I do enjoy a um, time jump type story or a um, time travel story. So definitely check out The Adam Project. Another one that I watched on streaming is called Ghostland, which only got one star on Letterboxd for me. Um, I did not like the movie at all. I, I really don't even know why I watched it. Somebody must have recommended it to me, um, but I just could not, I could not get into it. I didn't like the characters. I really can't even tell you much about it. I don't even, I remember I didn't like it, but I don't even remember what it was about, which tells you how much I didn't like it. Okay, the next film, I went back to 1984 and watched The Last Starfighter, which I had this really great um, Arrow release. Um, this right here, I gave three stars on Letterboxd. I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, the story um, wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, I had probably higher expectations for it. Maybe I was just in a bad mood that day or whatever, but anyways, I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to, uh, but it is a good one. You know, if they put something out on an Arrow release, then it's got to be pretty good. Okay, the next film that I saw is another one that was on streaming, and it was on Disney Plus called Turning Red. Um, I gave it two and a half stars. It wasn't my favorite of the Disney films, the Disney Pixar films, but I do check them all out. Some of them are better than others, but this was probably one of my least favorite films. Um, I enjoyed the animation style, but as far as the story goes, it wasn't really a story that I was interested in. Um, it didn't make me feel either good or bad. It was just blah to me. 
I know a lot of people like Turning Red. I'll definitely add it to the collection because I have all the other ones in the collection. But Turning Red was another one that I had watched. Okay, the next one that I watched <coughs> was a newer release. And it's from A24. It is Red Rocket um, with Simon Rex. Um, this right here was an interesting story. This is from the same director and writer, I believe, that did the Florida Project from A24, which I really enjoyed. It has a lot of, um, it kind of reminds me of that story in a bit, in a bit, in a way, a bit, but um, there was a lot of more adult um, situations in this particular film that I was not expecting. I don't really know what I was expecting. I didn't really um, watch any trailers or really read up on this one before I watched it, but it does have a lot of adult situations in it, so just you know, know that going into it. Another film that was recommended to me was a film called Don John. This right here has Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it. I gave it two stars. Um, it's got Scarlett Johansson in it and Julianne Moore. This right here is another one that has adult situations in it that I was not prepared for. Um, I've had this one in the collection for a very long time. Somebody had recommended that I check this out, or maybe Letterboxd recommended that I check this out. I can't remember which, um, but I believe this right here was his directorial debut. I thought he did a really good job. It was an interesting story, um, a good twist on a romantic comedy, I guess you would say. Um, but anyways, I gave it two stars on Letterboxd. I'm glad I, I'm glad I watched it. Okay, uh, another film, so the next film that I watched um, was another recommendation, and I really enjoyed this one. It got three and a half stars, and it is a film called High Tension. I didn't know anything really about this film. I did have this in, in the collection. I just never took the time to watch it until somebody actually recommended it to me. I really had a lot of fun with this one. Great story, um, great action, great kills, a good twist. Um, I would highly recommend you check this one out. Another film from 1984 that I watched is called Dreamscape. This right here came out the same year. This is 1984. This came out the same year as A Nightmare on Elm Street. And it kind of deals with dreams, as you can tell with the title, Dreamscape. Um, some people said this was a knockoff of A Nightmare on Elm Street, which, to me, A Nightmare on, on Elm Street was much better than this. This wasn't bad at all, but... Um, it was not A Nightmare on Elm Street, um, but check that out if you've never seen it. Okay, another film that I saw in the theater during the month of March was X. Um, I was really looking forward to seeing this film. I know a lot of people um, had really hyped it up. I hadn't watched any of the trailers, so I wasn't really sure what I was going to be getting into, but I really did enjoy it. I thought it was very um, retro as far as the way that the style of the film looked. Um, it did feel like you were in the 70s, early 80s um, during the film. I enjoyed the action. So the first half of the movie was slower than the second half, but once the second half started, it just kept on going. I really enjoyed it. I thought it had some really good performances. Um, so very happy that I was able to see X in the theater. Okay, then I was getting ready for a live stream on, um, on someone's YouTube channel. Um, I think Pops Movie Dungeon and uh, about Martin Scorsese and so I had never seen Taxi Driver and so I wanted to check this one out. I really did it. Um, I really love this story. I had never seen it before. I gave it four stars on Letterboxd. Probably one of my top favorites that I've watched in a long time and I really enjoyed this one. If you've, need, if you've never seen Taxi Driver, this is definitely one that you should check out. Um, another Martin Scorsese film is um, this film here called New York Stories, an anthology. It has three different films in it. And Martin Scorsese did one of the stories as part of this. His The story that he did was good. I enjoyed it. Um, but the other two stories I really couldn't get into. I didn't really like it. This one right here only got one star on Letterboxd. Um, I would not recommend this one to anybody. I did not enjoy this one. So continuing on with the Martin Scorsese um, films that I was watching, I did take time and watch Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, it had been a very long time since I've seen this film. This one came out in 1974, so I do remember watching this as a kid. Um, but what really interested me in the story is the fact that I really did enjoy 
um, the TV show Alice, which came on in the late 70s, early 80s. So if you grew up in the 70s and the 80s, you probably watched Alice on TV. So the TV show was based off of this movie. So it was nice just to revisit this film and compare it to the TV show. Um, of course, the film itself is a lot um, more dramatic than what the TV show was. The TV show was more of a comedy. Um, but anyways, Alice doesn't live here anymore. I would definitely, ha I would definitely recommend that you check that one out. Okay, then the next three films I was getting ready for a live stream on Tim Talks Talkies um, channel. So I did take time to watch the Godfather films. Um, I didn't. I do have the 4K releases, but I didn't open up the 4K releases quite yet because I'm waiting to see if the price will drop. But I did revisit all three Godfather films. I really, um, so the first one that I watched was, um, of course, I watched them in order. So I watched The Godfather. I enjoyed it. I had seen it um, before, of course. Um, but this time around, it just seemed way too long. I couldn't get into it. I did not really enjoy it, which I expressed that during the live stream. Um, but it, um, the next day, I watched Godfather 2, which I enjoyed more than I enjoyed The Godfather. And then on the third day, I watched Godfather 3, which I really enjoyed surprisingly because I didn't remember it very much at all. I had only seen all of these films once before. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very happy that I took the time to watch all three Godfather films. So on Letterboxd, they all three got... Um, so the first two got four stars and part three got three stars, but I did enjoy them all. And then I took time the next day um, to watch Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which I really had a lot of fun with this one. I've been meaning to watch this one for a very long time. I was looking for a film that had a short run time, and I stumbled across this one in the collection. So I finally checked it out, and I'm very happy that I did. I would definitely highly recommend everybody check this movie out. It was a fun watch. I gave it um, three and a half stars on Letterboxd. Okay, the next film that I watched is one that I had just recently purchased from Hamilton Books. Uh, actually, I, I believe I did. Yeah, I did. And it's called Stoker. Um, I wasn't very familiar with this film. I do know that I had the still book for this. I've had it for years. Never really knew much about it. Um, but I finally took time to watch this one. And the reason why I watched it, I believe, is because of the short run time. But, of course, it has... Um, Nicole Kidman in it. I really don't know the other two actors and actor in here. Um, this one here looked familiar, but I can't remember exactly where I saw her from. Um, this right here was a weird kind of story. It reminded me of like an A24 type film. But um, anyways, I watched it. It was kind of strange. I couldn't really... I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but I only gave it two stars on Letterboxd. And then the final film that I watched is another one that I picked up from Hamilton Books. And it is The Standoff at Sparrow Creek, which I gave three stars on Letterboxd. Really enjoyed it. It is a 80-something minute runtime, which is another reason why I watched it. Um, good performances, a good story, very slow paced. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Really liked the slipcover on this one. So those are all of the films that I watched during the month of March. Hopefully you were able to watch a lot of films um, during the month. Um, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the ones that I watched. Also, let me know what you watched and any recommendations that you may have that you would like me to watch during the month of April. I really do enjoy watching the films that you recommend and, and talking about those. Um, over social media so definitely let me know in the comments below which films you think i should check out but if you like what you saw here today please give it a thumbs up and share the video if you haven't subscribed to my channel i really appreciate it if you would subscribe if you do subscribe please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time i upload a new video if you haven't found me on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter instagram and on tiktok and if you'd like to find out what i've been watching you can find me over on letterboxd i do have links below but thanks again for watching and we will see you next time